have the adjustable Bilstein shocks like the yes. Hellcat? Okay. Yes. I mean, we're on a pretty pretty bad road. What are we, in sport mode? We're Whoa. in regular mode. Jeez. <laughs> this thing rides pretty hard. Feel it? I, I, I was got expecting got, worse, though. The shocks got a lot of compression in them. Whoa. And this is a bad road. The Quadrifoglio rides better, Jerry. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, obviously the ride, I think. The oh Stelvio my god, I can't remember how too. freaking hard this thing rides. Wow. I cannot believe they made this. <laughs> it feels like a freaking sports car. I still don't feel, think it feels as heavy as it is, actually. I mean, it feels like it could be, uh... How are the roads where you live in Maryland? Are they bad, they're, like, not, they're not that bad. They're not like this? No. I don't think they use <laughs> as much salt down there. Yeah, we only get like, maybe one or two snows a year. Can we now? Can we put it in a comfort mode? I'm just curious if this is just... as comfortable as it's gonna get. Are you, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Jeep track hog. I tell you, I think the uh, GT, the uh, three, the 350R is actually more comfortable than. This. Oh my, God, Jerry, it's well, it's like a <laughs> night and day difference. I don't think it's terrible though. I mean, I've been. No, it is. I wasn't expecting it to be that hard. That's my first initial impressions. I had no idea that this would ride like that. Because you got to think about it, like even with some of the AMGs, they, they throw the big motor, mm -hmm. but then the rest of the car is very cushy. Yep. You know what I mean? And it doesn't break the tires loose. Not really, no. Oh, Jesus. That has a transmission when you shift it. Is it decent? Yeah. It's a standard ZF, I guess, ZF. right? Yeah, I mean, they the heavy duty one. Really I can't get over how, like, firm it rides. Man, it's kind of cool, though, you know? Definitely cool. Well, I think they have to control the body with this much power. You know, it's like yeah, uh, maybe you'll fly right off the road. If this thing that, right? starts to wallow around with the weight, you'll you'll be dead. No, are you comfortable driving this every day? Yeah. <laughs> My commute's two and a half miles. Oh, okay. three miles. Yeah. I think if you lived in New York, this probably would be a little harsh for you every day. Yeah. Yeah. You think it rides like in Stelvio's uh, sport mode? Do you think the sport mode in Stelvio? You know what it is, Jer Jerry. On the Stelvio, even you know your TI Sport, and mine, um, the shock tuning and the spring rates are so good, and the chassis so stiff, and it just feels so good. I wanted to lower my Stelvio, and I decided against it. I said it feels so good. Yeah. I just honestly, I honestly like the shock valving. And the feel of the Stelvio better than the Quadrifoglio. The Quadrifoglio to me is it could be firmer. That's just what I like. I like a firmer ride. I only drive it in race mode. It's like hard. But I, I, I want like if I could make it 15% stiffer like this, I would probably think it would be more, <laughs> you know, engaging. In fact, what I re usually drive in, I have a custom mode because you could change all the draw. You could change all these parameters. Oh god, look at this. So everything in track except for. This the, is pretty uh, cool, the technology that they put in there. Yeah, yeah. Then they have, this is the whole performance pages that you can... This isn't like the Hellcat, the take, same stuff? It takes forever to load, I don't know why. Oh, it's very fun. slow? Yeah. Does this do Apple CarPlay and all that? Yeah, yeah. yes, yeah. CarPlay. Wow, look at all of this stuff. So this is what I, this is a custom setup, you could change all these things, like, you know, you can, or... It's complicated. You know, you oh, can do all these gauges, and... It has, it has actually a you know, uh, wideband. Uh, already hooked up from the factory. Cool. Is my heated seat still on? Yeah, sorry. Let me take that off. That's one thing I do not like is the, uh, like, having to go use the touchscreen for, like, stiff Well, stuff, BMW like, was like that, too. Yeah. You get in the new M5, I mean, it's, it's like, oh, how much mode. horsepower do you want? How do you want your steering? I'm like, I just want to get in and go. <laughs> I want to make it very analog and very simple. That's one other thing why I like the Alfa Romeo. You just push the button and you I go. Tell you, I, I broke drove my brother's M, uh, was it M3, what is that, this car, the M345, whatever. Yeah, it's got good power. I thought it was going to break the tires loose. Well, I, the traction control's still on. Yeah. If you want to take that off and then... When the Porsche Cayenne turbos came out way back, I modified a lot of them, and I got quite a few of them to spin the tires loose and scare me. Yeah, what do you think of that Tesla truck? My neighbor got a new Lamborghini <laughs> Urus. Yeah, it's telling him. Dark blue with, uh orange calipers. It's pretty nice looking. Is it bigger? <laughs> I like the, the, the backfire spits. Now, can you make the steering firmer? That's as firm as the steering is going to okay. get. Yeah, the, everything is in track except for the stability. Control. You know what? Um, Jerry James that has uh, the Fiat, 
his dad had an old SRT, when, you know, very first generation. When, when did that car come out? The first, 2006? First generation. SRT Jeep. And uh, the one thing I know, oh, yeah, the, yeah. the chassis, the, the chassis was terrible. I had one too. <laughs> it was terrible, you know. <laughs> and the plastic over here was like the cheapest when thing the, I've When ever you seen. punched it, the steering was like all over the yeah. place. You really? would never know you're in like <laughs> three tons of Jeep, you know. Jesus. And it's, you know what, the, the automatic shift was incredible. Yeah, the ZF's got the transmissions down pretty darn good. Oh my god. This, this is definitely cool. You so can feel that little bit of a stall yeah. if you're not in the throttle all the way. But I mean, this engine is just such a monster. You know, like Dodge will put it into anything and make it cool. Like so when, when this engine came out, I'm like, oh, that's that's so great. But I knew that the regular Challenger and, and the Charger weren't going to be able to put the power down. No, none of them do. None of them do at all. And then they put the 275 tires. I was tires. just going to tell you that. It's, I'm it's like, a, that's ridiculous. But because the body can't fit it, and now they went now with the water body. body and what are they running, a 295 now? Yep. A little bit bigger. But my or actually, G they might be up to 315s. My GT350R has 315s in the back and 305s in the front. But yeah, that was the one thing that it always suffered because the Challenger looks so mean, but I don't think you could really get a big tire under there unless you do some serious body mods to it. That's the thing, like you could have all the power in the world. Like I remember years ago, mm. one of my clients had a uh, twin turbo Hennessy Viper and it's right in town. He's like, oh, go take it for a spin. And <laughs> I punched crap. it. <laughs> I punched it by the movie theater. It was a 1997 GTS, blue with white stripes. Mm -hmm. And the car spun around, did a 360, installed. I said, I'm getting out of this thing. It's dangerous. <laughs> I had like 1,500 horsepower. I was like, what are you doing with this? He wanted to trade it in to me. He wanted to give it to me to sell. Because at the time, I was importing uh, gray market Ferraris when the 360 oh, wow. Modena came out. And I was like, I don't want that car. Who am I going to sell that Hennessy Viper to? You know, it's just one of those things where you're just not going to find anybody for it. The steering wheel is so thick. So put it in firm mode. This is this is firm. This is the stiff. This is stiffest. This is the stiffest. Because yeah, my cousin, I don't notice much of a difference. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't think it's a huge leap from one to the other. I think it's pretty stiff. And like some could, cars, you really notice it. Yeah. And some cars, it's like oh, it's a little bit of a change. But uh, but the cabin is comfortable. There's no like you don't get that vibration coming into the car like the Quadrifoglio does. And I have the heated, the cooled seats. Even the back seats are heated. Well, you need a seat on the back. Listen, no. if you if you need a if you need a utility vehicle like this, and you have you know kids and stuff, yeah, I, I would go for it. Like if you're in a situation where you can only have one car and you got to do it all, mm -hmm. this would fit that bill. For I mean, you're not going to go take it's it better than a mini. So an autocross or just something no. like that, but but I will take it to a drag strip. Yeah, you take it to a drag strip so you can have fun, <laughs> and then uh, you throw your stuff in the back, drive it all year round. You can even take it skiing if you want. cares about hills. When that thing hits, whew, this is cool. You know what's funny? You don't hear the whine in the back seat as much from the supercharger. Well, because the, 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 ever since I did the exhaust, it overpowers the whine. Yeah. Jerry, I actually think this rides firmer than my red GT350. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe it. And this has a this has like a multi-link suspension in the back. This is yeah, not like live is, axle is, like the old one. Remember yeah. the 2006? That was, yeah. that was like a live axle. That thing was, that was brutal. It was a good-looking truck. Back I then. mean, this has all of Mercedes' last generation platform. What, what generation? Do you know what year? Um, it's probably the 2007. So it's the older one. The older, the new not, G not the newest platform. The new GLE yeah. rides amazing. It rides amazing. I had one for a few days. I couldn't believe it. But obviously wow. they don't have the air suspension either, so you know, they, they replaced with the Bilsteins. And does this have aluminum uh, front subframe and rear subframe? I believe so, yeah. Okay. Because I know when, when Jeep came out with this platform, they were all marketing like all the aluminum on the suspension and how they're like, hey, look, we're giving you all this other stuff and then we're not charging a premium. You got good music on. What is this? Sinatra? Oh, it's a Hallmark Chris channel for Christmas. Nice. <laughs> the Alcantara comes with the panoramic. I, I actually, I, I really wanted one without the panoramic to save the weight. Because I take it to the drag, you know, I, I go to the drag strip with all my cars. Cool. And the last, my Mercedes had the panoramic 
and I think I used the thing one time. Did you notice in your E63S when I had mine, every time I backed out of my driveway, I would hear the creak. Yeah, I heard creak, yeah. <laughs> my CTSVs both of them the same thing. And I, that's one thing I love about the Alfa Romeo, it has no sunroof because it, it, it takes away rigidity. Yeah. But you know what's interesting on our cars is the carbon fiber panel is so thin yeah, it, that it's not really structural. Yeah. Which is that's really why cool. originally they didn't, I think they couldn't make it uh, like a, a clear coat carbon view because it's... Well, they're doing it now, Jerry, on the yeah, 2020, those right? Yeah, I think they're still thicker. in manual mode. Apparently, those roofs are a lot yeah. thicker and heavier because they have to use multiple layers of carbon, so you lose you lose the weight advantage. See, other cars, it, like, after a while, it defaults back to shifting. There's the line. You know what? The engine, uh, these, these Hemis really have a very unique sound. They sound so different than the Chevy motors and the Ford motors. In yeah, Ford, I can always tell when a... Well, this is a single cam engine. Yeah. It's an old school motor. Yep. Overhead valve. Well, so is the, 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 the LT1, LT4s mm -hmm. from GM. This does have a very similar uh, pop uh, to the Z06 I was driving yesterday, and as far as the way the engine responds. My GT350R. 650 yeah, my GT350R just got like an obnoxious oh. sound. It's, I love it the, with the uh, cross plane. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, flat. That's a flat plane, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jerry, I just got the uh, owner's kit for it. It came with the engine crank and the plaque and everything. Oh, really? I just, it just showed up today. They shipped that separately? Yeah. It comes from a, uh, right from Ford in Livonia, Michigan. Man, this is cool, though. The steering actually has pretty good feedback. I was expecting it to be sloppy for a Jeep. Yeah, you I'm know? surprised. It's actually not, not, not bad at all. No, I'm actually... Impressed at how sporty it feels. For it doesn't Jeep. wallow around like you'd expect. No, it, it, not at all. That's exactly what I was you know, going to tell you. It doesn't have that body roll. And this is over 5,000 pounds? 50, probably closer to 5,300. Jesus. So this is a good thousand pounds heavier than a Stelvio. You know, you know, I was looking at we we used to have a Grand uh, Wagoneer. Yeah, he was telling you know, me. You know what the weight on that is? What was that? Forty five hundred pounds. Really? I guess because it didn't have a lot yeah. of modern stuff. Uh, yeah. All the safety stuff in it, right? Safety stuff probably adds a few thousand pounds to new cars today. So I was like, this thing is actually eight hundred pounds heavier. <laughs> well, you look just look at the drivetrain and the suspension. They probably put this. You know. Well, probably... they they actually had to to. Um, uh, get a uh, contract out to a an aerospace company to get some of the drivetrain components uh, manufactured because they were breaking the, uh, the the normal ones that the Jeep would that the Jeep really? came with. Yeah, when they were doing the uh, R and D for this. Wow, you really uh, tailgate real quick in this thing. Yeah, yeah you got to be careful. <laughs> this thing in New York. <laughs> That's the problem with these cars. The only thing, like you said, the, the stability still on. Is yeah. You actually feel, I, when I was I feel a little you, slippage. You feel a little yeah. slip. I didn't feel yeah. a lot of it taking over. It seems pretty stable without it. You got bad gas in the car. You smell it? No, I put an uh, octane booster in it. Oh, it smells like sulfur. <laughs> <laughs> Is that any good? I don't know. I don't well, know. Well, it's I trust actually that it's VP Racing. VP Racing's good stuff. Yeah, the Octanium. Yeah. But the unleaded version, not the leaded. I use that, the, that and Boostane. It sometimes turns your plugs like purple. Yeah, yeah or <laughs> orange or whatever. See now on the on the on the parkway it feels more livable. Yeah. It's just you know as we live in an area where the roads are just blown out. I don't care, you can get a Lexus, and you're gonna feel all the bumps. Yeah, up up by me because it's really weird, like Montgomery County is probably like Westchester County like 50 years ago, where they're starting to spread out more and there's yeah. still farms within like 20 miles of, of like the city. See now, now the faster you go, now that the, the suspension feels like spot on, you know? You can feel the rebound in the shock when you get a little bit of transitions in the highway. I wouldn't take turns at high speed with this. I think I would be a little afraid. Yeah. But uh, you see, with the Stelvio, you can take turns at 90 miles an hour. God damn. Yeah. 
thing is, like, I think that you stop on the throttle, it puts a smile on your face, and you kind of well, forget. you know, it is. That's what these things are for. Like, you, you know, like it's totally impractical. Yeah, you know that. <laughs> but, it's but when I took the test drive, I'm like, this thing is like, I was like smiling the whole time. Yeah, that's what it, and that's what it is, and that's why I love performance. Cars. Life's too short for to drive a boring thank car. Thank you, thank you. I, I say that all the time in my in my videos. Like, seriously, if you're gonna do it, do it now. You know. I have a lot of friends that, you know, they have kids and they went from like a cool hot sports car to a minivan. I'm like, dude, you're nuts. Well, I'll tell you though, the, it may be impractical, you know, as a driver, but on paper, it's very practical with the tax incentives with the... Uh, yeah, with, so tell me, I'll put it in the video, like tell me about the tax incentives. I had no idea about this. If, a, if an SUV has more than 6,000 pounds gross vehicle weight, you don't, you're not subject to the normal SUV limitations, which would be like $18,000 a year. Wow. Plus, uh, the, the uh, I think it's all, all together. I think it would end up being about twenty-two thousand. You could t you're limited to in year one. This you could write off the whole thing as long as you're using it hundred percent for business purposes. See, and the owner of this is an accountant, so he knows. <laughs> See, so you find you find a way to uh, take advantage of that too and maximize it, right? Yeah. Where does that come from? Like agricultural. Uh incentives or something. But what's really fu interesting is all these vehicles, like the X5 at one point was below 6,000 pounds, the ML, all these cars were below it, these SUVs, and then all of a sudden they started adding seven passenger because it's based on the number of uh, occupants times a certain weight. It's really funny. I feel like I stole someone's uh, car. Um, we got Sinatra on 800 horsepower Jeep. <laughs> automatic mode. Just leave it, let it do its own thing. I don't think I could catch up with it. I, I think there's somebody who said, I was reading that the the, the, uh, the the gauges lag a little bit so they kind of like, uh, they hobble you because you should be shifting a little sooner than you're expecting. I, I noticed that. I'm, I'm trying to catch the RPM and it seems like there, there is yeah, a, there's a this is LCD. Lag. There is a delay in LCDs. Yeah. Can't beat analog. You can set up like custom shift lights too if you want, like at certain RPMs. Which is cool, and then I guess you could account for the uh, lag. You know, there's no drone in the exhaust. Yeah. Look where it, that was big with me because I, I you know, no, you can't have that. Every, drone. No, it drives me nuts, especially when you're like on, on highway. Like it doesn't even sound that loud right now when you're just cruising. No, not at all. I mean, you, when you get on at a full throttle, you hear it well, crack you, open. Yeah, but you've never sat back here, Tom. It's actually pretty loud <laughs> back here. No, I, I hear most of the sound coming from the back. Yeah. Now my CTSV, when I had all that work done, I heard more whine in the front than I did out the noise out the mm -hmm. back. Just different design of the car, you know. I used to hear that. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I would have. I would get in trouble with this because I would just be romping on it all day long, and the cops would eventually just. There you go. You were doing something wrong. We heard you. <laughs> this is cool, man. Thanks for letting me take this thing for a ride. Right. I've no never problem. ever driven one of these. I came close to buying a Hellcat. <laughs> when it came out and then it's weird I, I went to the dealer and the dealer didn't have one in stock so they called a customer this little old guy came with a cane and he made me drive his Hellcat and I'll never forget it he had like a, he was a short little old guy and he had a thick cushion on the seat and I'm sitting on it because I didn't want to mess the guy's car around you know and I'm sitting on it and I'm doing 90 miles an hour in the Bronx River Parkway and I felt like I was sitting on the living room sofa and I'm all high up and I was like I don't know if this car's for me and this little old man with a cane, he's like, oh, he goes, yeah, he goes, I, I light it up at the, every stoplight. I'm like, God bless you, man. He was like 80 years old. He was like one of the first ones to have a Hellcat up in, uh, in the area. I tell you, though, I think I'd rather have this than a Hellcat because you get... You well, get, the Hellcat, you have no confidence yeah, on the road. you got to be and, careful. And it's, it's impractical anyway, and it's not like it's going to be like a sports car handling wise. But it does so. look retro cool. That's yeah. why I, I love the look of it. I think that's one of the most authentic retro muscle cars out right now. It's still the Challenger. And actually, I was just thinking, 2010 or 11 is when they, they did this platform. Really? That long ago? Yeah. It's almost 10, 10 years. Yeah. So wow. they were using whatever Mercedes was using at that well, time. Well, I, I remember when this platform came out, it was like a huge thing. Like, well, they finally made the Cherokee really good. Everybody was talking about it. You know, with the aluminum yep. and the new platform. And it's true. It's when, I, when I drive behind these, and I can see all the aluminum control yep. arms, and it does look like the old ML. I agree. Wow. When did uh, Mercedes and, and Chrysler stop that merger, like with sharing stuff? Or, or did, I know they broke away from that. 
but did they have some sort of contractual thing? Because the Challenger is based on an old yeah. platform between the, like the old E-Class platform. E-Class and the 140 chassis yep. and the Chrysler 300. It's yep. like all chopped up in the one. And then this is based on an, like when did they must have had some sort of agreement yeah. in place that they could still use or share or platform share cars for X amount of years. Hey, listen, I think it helps. It helps offset the oh, investment yeah. of starting. You know, look, Alfa Romeo put billions of dollars into the Giorgio platform. You know, just to resurrect the brand. I mean, I don't think a lot of companies were willing to do that today. They want to just do it as quick and cheap as possible. But yep. you see, there look, it looks like they might actually put the Stelvio uh, in a Lancia body. Really? Yeah, which would be actually kind of nice. It's a shame that Lancia just is like, you know, withering away. I just can't get around how But I heard that, that they were killing the... Um, that high performance alpha, the 600 horsepower. Yeah, now yeah. Maserati's gonna Maserati's take it. Jesus. This thing gets up to like 90 real quick. Jeez. Yeah, this thing's got some set of balls on it. So. So it's like. It's so funny that as soon as you mash the throttle, everybody gets quiet. <laughs> Everybody just gets quiet and holds on. <laughs> you, you can't even hear, so. It's amazing the G-Force from a roll, you know? You should, you really want to try, uh, I wouldn't say do launch control, but because launch control is so finicky. I have it in my car and it, it, it bogs the car down too much on the on the shell. I it's think you're weird. better off if you stop, go to a stop and then foot brake it to about 15 RPM. Oh, you can RPM. actually foot brake it? So yeah. If you foot brake the outfit, it throws a check engine Exactly, line. and the same thing with, <laughs> even with the Mercedes, like all the torque limiters used yeah. to kill it. See, in the Alfa Romeo, it's got two throttle bodies, and just like in a Ferrari, when it, when it senses you're beating on it, it just doesn't like it, and boom, mm. electronic throttle body fault, and it shuts the car down into limp mode. That's the only problem I hate about mm. Quadrifoglio is you cannot do a burnout. Mm. And you it drives me nuts. Once that, you release the brake, you have it, to like... Yeah, you have to be really, you really cannot, quick. cannot like go... If, if you're even a little bit on the brake, it, it doesn't work. So, just to show you, let's see, where's my timer? Let's see, race last or best. We're still filming this, yeah, we're still filming it. So it did a 147 60 foot time. Jeez. Well, yeah, you got the grip. Now, is it 50-50? What's the split on the torque on this when you So when, you, when you're in track mode, I think it's 75 rear, 25 front. That's cool. You know, you know what I know is when I'm when I'm hitting it hard, I don't feel torque steer. Yeah. You know, like where I, I, if you go to a conventional yep. system, even like some of the Audis, the older ones, the old R6s, you'd feel that torque steer. Yep. Where it would pull, you know, pull yep. the steering wheel when you feel the front wheels. I had an R6. Yeah. <laughs> Which one did you have? Did you have the old one, like the 2001? Old three. The old three. Okay. That was actually pretty nice. That car. was a great. I like that. that was a great car. I I modified a lot of those. I had an awesome tune for those things back in the days. Is that a titanium exhaust tip on a, on a, really? a town and country? Oh, it makes it faster. Look, it is. <laughs> That's wild. <laughs> oh my god, it? did you hear that? <laughs> did he have one of those buzzers in it? Is like it, the little whistles? That, is that competition? <laughs> People are crazy. It's funny though, like I cannot pass, like if I'm in the quadrifolio, I can't. Yeah, it gets quiet! <laughs> I can't pass the WRX without him wanting to race. It's like they, they you know, just... Jay, you know what's funny? WRX is coming, came after me all the time in my Shelby. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know. I don't drive my cars to go race people. I think, I think it's I, like I think I've outgrown that I by think 20 it's like years now. Now, one thing I did with um, my CTSV, my 2010, I was on a Taconic one day, and a guy had a Gallardo, and he's got his hot blonde next to him, and I'm by myself, and he wants to race me. So I'm doing like 50, 60, and I slowed down, and I downshifted it. And I lit up the tires on the highway, and he was like, oh. <laughs> And then I smoked him. I blew the doors off that car. And then, of course, he caught off to me and started zigzagging in and out of cars. And in the CTSV, you're not doing that. So I was like, ah, have fun. But it was really cool to see his face in a Gallardo, and I lit up the tires while I was doing 50 on the highway. That thing was a monster. That thing was a monster, too. It really was. That thing was fast. That's one of my favorite Lamborghinis, actually. Gallardo's are interesting. I mean, it's, it's basically an R8 and A4 yeah. all built in the one. Yep. It was funny. You should see if your neighbor has his uh, Urus out and have the uh, track off next to the Urus. Jeez. Urus is actually bigger bigger than this. It is. Really? It's, I, yeah, yeah, it's big. 
Yeah, it's over 200 well, inches, yeah, where this QA, is like 189. And it's like 160,000 more <laughs> to buy one. <laughs> what BMW's done to those big grills now. Oh, it looks like a toaster oven. Yeah, I can't stand that. I see, listen, I don't know. I, I would, I'm a big BMW fan from the old yep. stuff, okay? They just started getting too complex, mm -hmm. and, and everything is active, active stabilizer bars, active steering, and when you drive the car, it doesn't feel like you're driving a car anymore. It, it just doesn't feel right to me, control. but that was a very analog BMW. The E60 was a great one, because it had that Formula One style yep. V10. And the sound was phenomenal. My, my, buddy, my buddy still has a, a manual E60, yeah. which is very. But the very SMG, few of them. the SMG feels better because the manual, because that was the E39 manual. The gearing was a little yeah, weird. Yeah, they, they, the they didn't design the car for that. No. But did, that, did you know that a lot of the early M3 SMGs are basically identical mechanically, and you can actually yeah. convert them back down to a manual? I need Ooh, a chiropractic and adjustment. Do that. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, this road is bad, isn't it? Jesus. I feel like I'm in a track car. Well, it's track hook. <laughs> oh my god! This is stiff. Yeah, I'd have to pop the Advils on a bad day to drive this. <laughs> this is cool though. This, this is definitely a very interesting vehicle. I don't think I don't think it's a one-trick pony. I think it does a lot of things well. It's so dude, my seats are comfortable, good stereo. Yeah, it definitely could be good a good cargo room. Yeah, no just not just not where we live. I think it would be too too rough on us. <laughs>